scandal about childcare regulations here. So there's been quite a lengthy interview with the Minister, and she's now on the phone to the Deputy Prime Minister, so that's more important, I'm afraid. So apologies. She will be here in a couple of minutes, and we will kick off. We have enough padding in the conference schedule that you will probably get lunch. <laughs> and you might even get a coffee break if everybody talks very quickly. Now, I'm going to try and make this work. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have the fastest nervous breakdown in human history, and you will never <laughs> see me again. <laughs> It was working this morning. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So welcome to Dublin. Welcome to the meeting. And in a minute, we have the official one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good morning, everyone. You're very welcome. Uh, I'd like to welcome our visitors to Dublin, Kate Miller Fulton. Uh, delighted to be here this morning. Um, thank you for giving me the honour of opening this conference, this very important conference on child health research, the key to a healthier uh, European society. Um, as Minister for Children and to Youth Affairs, we want to see a greater focus <coughs> on children, children's issues, child protection, child welfare, higher standards, uh, child health. And I have to say, uh, when I read the background documentation uh, this morning for this conference, I was hugely heartened to see the work that is being done by all of you. Uh, the research you're coming together to share here uh, this morning and your wish repeated again and again in the documentation uh, that I read for a greater visibility at European level of child health issues. And that is what you're here to discuss um, over the weekend. We certainly need to see that. We're talking a lot about uh, the ageing society uh, in Europe, but of course uh, the key to a healthier uh, aged society is how we look after our young people and how we begin uh, the job of health promotion uh, in the early years and in ensuring our children are healthy. I'd like to congratulate the two main organisers of the conference, uh, who are the people uh, leading the two EU FP7 funded projects, uh, the research into child health in Europe known as REACH led by Professor Anthony Staines from Dublin City University, and she was led by Dr. Martin Grishelt from the Centre for Research in Environmental Epidemiology in Barcelona. Both projects are ending in 2013, and this conference provides a great opportunity to hear about the great and complementary work that you have been doing. REACH has been preparing a roadmap for child health research in Europe for the next decade. And as I say, we could not under, we couldn't emphasize enough the importance of having that roadmap. You do make the point again and again that it's not enough to do the research. What we have to do is really look at how we implement the research, how we inform policymakers, and how policymakers take on board the message from research. CHIPUS was tasked with developing a child cohort research strategy for Europe, and a highlight of the meeting will be the launch of both of these reports. As I have said, our younger generation are our future, so ensuring their good health is in our vital national interest. But unfortunately, too much recent research on children's public health does point to an appalling vista. The Growing Up in Ireland longitudinal study commissioned by my department tells us a lot about contemporary Irish childhood. And I know you have the research from other <coughs> European countries um, that is similar. Most children live healthy, active lives, but many children don't. Most children play sports and engage in a variety of out-of-school activities, but many children don't. For many children, high fat and high sugar food are not just the odd treat, they are the staple. For many children, TV, digital media and gaming are just not just another form of activity, they can be the predominant focus. This lifestyle, as we know, and unhealthy diet does pose a major risk. I have repeatedly highlighted my concerns over the epidemic of childhood obesity in Ireland, 
in particular the research emanating from the Going Up in Ireland National Longitudinal Study, which found that 26% of nine-year-olds uh, were found to have a body mass index that was outside of the healthy range. Of these, 19% were defined as overweight and 7% obese. This is not, as you know, just an Irish phenomenon. The prevalence of overweight and obesity has increased at an alarming speed in recent decades, so much so that the World Health Organization now calls it a global epidemic. This disease, the disease, is now a major public health problem throughout Europe. It is not, of course, just a childhood problem. And of course, obesity in childhood and adult are intrinsically linked, as we now know. The effect of overweight and obesity in childhood are cumulative. Many overweight children grow up to become obese adults. The resulting health problems will place a huge additional burden on our future healthcare system. I'm equally concerned about the other public health risks affecting our children and young people, in particular from alcohol misuse and abuse. Irish children are drinking from a younger age and drinking more than ever before. One half of Irish 16-year-old children have been drunk, and one in five is a weekly drinker. We have huge challenges in this area. We have to get rid in this country of our ambivalent approach to this issue, and we will be bringing in strong government initiatives and policies uh, to make sure we have a comprehensive response to this issue. <laughs> it is impossible to put a monetary value on one's health, but it is very easy to put a cost on ill health as the people in this room know more than most. As a state in Ireland and across Europe, we simply cannot afford the future costs of healthcare that will flow if we do not address these issues and the challenges posed by childhood obesity, by alcohol and tobacco, given the predicted disease burden associated with what we know are these preventable public health risks. Put simply, if we allow current trends to prevent the public health risks to continue, we are condemning our future generations to a future of ill health. Obviously, as Ireland's first ever cabinet minister for children and youth affairs, my task is to work with my government colleagues to rise to this challenge. I have been very clear that improving childhood health must be a priority, and I will work closely with my government colleagues to progress the government Healthy Ireland strategy, which I hope you will get an opportunity to examine. It was released just a few weeks ago. It's a very comprehensive statement of our approach to these issues and to health promotion and reducing the risks posed to future generations. The framework is a valuable opportunity for us in Ireland. I've always been extremely impressed when I read and reread the Marmot report. This has to be ours and our statement about future intent in these areas. Interestingly, the first objective of the Marmot Report in the UK was to give every child the best start in life. And you will be aware that we're having a, a very disturbing, thought-provoking and uh, serious discussion of the issues in relation to how we care for our under fives <coughs> in Ireland at present in our childcare services. Of course, the quality of care that our children receive in whatever settings they are in is critical uh, to their future well-being. That's the point I have been making this morning. And that's why we have to comprehensively address the range of issues that have emerged in Ireland uh, in recent years in relation to the care of our under fives. We need more focus on the care of our under fives in this country. We all know what the research says. We know what it says about early intervention. Moving from uh, the words uh, and from the research to implementation is key in that area as well, as in the areas you are um, looking at today. I do note uh, the key findings from the projects which you are um, discussing today. And in the interest of time, I, I won't go into very much detail on them, and you have plenty of opportunity to discuss them further. I'm very conscious that the start of your conference has been delayed, and I do apologize for that. But the key points that are emerging Children are our future. Children's lives need to be more visible. I'm very struck by what your researchers have said uh, in, in, in the work that they're doing. We must get greater visibility around children, around their lives, around the research that is being done on them. 
we must make sure it gets implemented across government. The other point that your researchers are emphasizing is that failed childhoods are very costly. They're costly not just for the children themselves, they're costly for society and they are costly uh, for our future of all of our economies. Children need to stay on the EU agenda. When we get the same sort of focus on children as we have on agriculture and we have in uh, the other areas at EU level, then perhaps when we're discussing the EU budgets for children, then we'll know that we really have put children on the agenda in the way that they need to be. The other point that you make is that European children need more research, particularly relating to implementation. And I can only concur with that from the perspective uh, as a government minister, given the responsibility to focus on this area. I have to say that I am so impressed with the Irish research, and I want to thank all of the Irish researchers in this room who over the last 10 years have given us the information, have given us the data in increasing amounts about our children. We have the tools now, we have the knowledge, we have the information, implementation, making sure that policy at national and European level delivers <coughs> on the data that you are providing is our task. I hope you will put a lot of focus in your discussions today on that implementation task, on making sure that there are cogent and cohesive links between the research that you are doing and the policymakers who have to implement uh, policies at European and national level to do the very best for our children. Thank you all for being here today. I hope you have a very <coughs> successful conference. Thank you to DCU for hosting the conference. Uh, thank you to the researchers and everyone um, who has been involved um, in the work to date. It's a real pleasure to have heard about the work and I hope you uh, have very uh, worthwhile discussions um, during the course of the conference and enjoy your visit to Dublin. Thank you very much indeed. Minister Fitzgerald, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen and colleagues. My name is Jim Dowling, I'm the Deputy President of Dublin City University. I'm here to represent the President who's uh, uh, had a long-standing engagement and he apologises for not being here this morning and he has asked me to come and speak to you in his absence. You're all very welcome to DCU, to what promises to be an extremely interesting a conference on the very important and topical theme of uh, child health research. Uh, we're, we're a university, we're in the business of education and, and research, and we speak a lot about it, and governments speak a lot about it, education being the foundation for social and economic development. And we talk a lot about the knowledge economy and educating our, our young people to very high standards so that they can contribute not just to Ireland, but to Europe and to the wider, wider uh, global community. Uh, we, we promote this message, and, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's really the foundation of, of, of what we do. But a child that doesn't enjoy good health is immediately at a disadvantage in availing, in availing of education. Child health, for, health therefore, matters for, for us all and for our futures. It's the bedrock of healthy economies, healthy societies, and healthy aging. Um, we can do a lot more to improve the health, quality, and quality of life and the longer term outcomes for our children, but we need to make this a priority for all. It must be at the core of our legacy to uh, future society. Just as an outsider, the Minister uh, mentioned uh, a total outsider to, to, to the, uh, the subject of health research, um, she mentioned uh, child obesity. And you know, when somebody uh, born when I was born, uh, there were very few children that one would see in those days that one would call uh, overweight. Uh, she also mentioned the, the change that has happened in that with over three hundred thousand children in Ireland considered uh, obese. 
Um, but as a university, we, we are playing a part. This You're sitting here in the School of Nursing, which is a major component of the major school within the Faculty of Science and Health here at Dublin City University. Another health-related school within, the, within this faculty is the School of Health and Human Performance. And one of our leading researchers, Professor Niall Moyna, has been very much to the fore in the media and uh, indeed on the ground, if you like, throughout Ireland, in trying to promote exercise in primary schools and trying to uh, get some metrics on it and trying to encourage more and more physical activity in schools. And together, so I'm, I, I'm an engineer and I'm involved in engineering and computing by background and, you know, I'm very much in favour of the digital age, but it has, as the Minister also mentioned, a very adverse effect on the on the levels of activity of children and indeed of adults, I might, I, I might add. So, um, unhealthy diets, lack of exercise and socio-economic backgrounds are all contributing to this extremely high level uh, of obesity. Uh, again, touching on as an outsider, but a recent personal experience, I was just reading some of the posters outside and it was heartened to see that the word allergy appeared on this. And my one of my grandsons, who was a perfectly healthy and uh, intelligent young, young four-year-old, but has suffers from an allergy. Now, this is something you, we, we don't see from the outside. And uh, the allergy is just, f just food allergies, but certain foods. And when the child goes to crash, they, or when the child goes to a, a birthday party, or when the child goes to school next September, you know, there's a certain fear all the time there among my son and his wife, the parents, about you know the allergy in children. And you know they're, they're, they have been looking and searching themselves, but trying to see what sort of research has been done in allergy. And I'm very happy to see that it's one of the one of the topics that's that's under consideration. Another one that that uh, that I never saw really, I never noticed in for for, for many years, was the, the whole notion of men, the mental health of children when we were going to school that just never seemed to be uh, a situation but it, it is very prevalent now and, and I'm glad to see also that a significant amount of research being undertaken into into aspects of uh, the mental health of children um, and another one that I saw was a poster outside that caught my eye which was the one about uh, smoking during pregnancy and uh, a close friend of mine uh, who's going going through her first pregnancy at the age of 40 and she's puffing away and I just wonder you know, what sort of damage she's, uh, she's doing to her, to her first unborn, unborn child. And I'm glad to see also that that's very much to the fore in terms of, uh, of the research. So that was from an outsider, so two or three little topics that, 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 that I would see and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to see that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not just a grumpy old uh, <laughs> academic. So I hope you enjoy the next two days. I was particularly, particularly impressed um, as uh, you know, uh, as an engineer, being a pragmatist, uh, I was particularly impressed with the uh, the titles of your workshops, the setting up of a, a world child, uh, a European child health observatory. Okay, so this is taking research and 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 and, uh, and doing the doing the measures. Okay, as an engineer, I'm very much involved in in, in, in measurement to prove prove points, and also the word implementation resonates greatly with me, and I'm very, very pleased to see that the, uh, the workshops uh, addressing those two issues. So it remains to me now just to thanks again to Minister uh, Francis Fitzgerald, and um, thank you to the European Union uh, for the funding on, the, on all of your behalf. Very welcome again to Dublin City University on this glorious morning. Uh, I know there are some, some non-research activities that are on the agenda uh, later on. So I do hope you enjoy them. Hope you enjoy Dublin coming up to our bank holiday weekend. And um, if, if, if you do get a chance to stay, there's more of Ireland outside of Dublin as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I very much encourage you to, to, to come back. It is the year of the Gavin. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy, enjoy the conference. I hope it's very fruit, fruitful. And may your research continue uh, because children are the number one resource that we have. Thank you. Good morning, thank you, Anthony, and good morning, everyone. I'm literally going to speak to you for about 
two minutes. Um, so I just wanted to welcome all of you here today to the School of Nursing and Human Sciences. And um, I suppose in particular, um, I want to welcome the Minister again. Uh, welcome Minister Francis Fitzgerald. We're very pleased to have you here. And obviously we're delighted that uh, Deputy President Jim Downing could also be here this morning for the opening of the conference. But in particular, what I wanted to do was to say a thank you to Professor Anthony Staines and also to Tressa McVeigh. I don't know if Tressa is about at the moment, but I'm sure most of you have been in contact with her over the last couple of weeks because she has worked extremely hard on organising today's event and making it a reality for us. Um, beyond that, I would just want to make a comment about the school. The school has a very significant history in relation to child health uh, in both our undergraduate and our postgraduate programs here because we deliver um, programs in nursing in general, uh, intellectual disabilities, mental health, and in particular in children's nursing. Uh, which we have a, an integrated children's and general nursing program and a postgraduate program for general nursing as well. And also we offer um, an MSc in Child and Adolescent Mental Health. So it's really important to see that the school is engaged, I suppose, both in the education and the research field in relation to child health. Um, beyond that, I suppose all of our other undergraduate programs at the school certainly have health links and would, be, would all contain modules and elements that uh, tend to looking at the developing child, uh, particularly our programs around our psychology degree, and our degree in health and society. And then at a postgraduate level, our master's and doctor programs in psychotherapy uh, have particular elements about systemic uh, health, uh, which look at the whole structure of the family and the care and development of the growing child. So we have quite a big involvement here in the school in child health and also in child research. I think that's evidenced again by um, the amount of staff we have in the school who have completed their PhDs around the areas of child health and have gone on then to be involved in further research projects in the area. Beyond that, the promotion of the school, um, I want to say thank you to all of you for being here today. And um, like the previous speakers, I do hope um, that the conference will be a great success and obviously a very enjoyable experience for you. So, thank you. That concludes the welcoming session. We will move on with business in a moment. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.